Hello coin collectors out there. Welcome back to the Big D Coins channel. Hopefully everyone is having a great day as always. In today's video, we are going to look at a decade series of coins. We've got the 1989 right here, the 1999 right here, and what you first saw is the 2009 Roosevelt Dime. So looking at the 89, 99, and 2009 Roosevelt Dime, uh, there's a reason why I've got the 2009 in this coin flip right here, and we'll talk about that in today's video. Wanted one call to action at the beginning of this video. Uh, if you're having any issues with the... Uh, high or low volume of the videos feel free to uh, leave a comment in the comment section i'm working on dialing that in i've been having some issues with having good volume then i upload it to youtube uh, and then the volume seems lower on youtube than what i uh, previewed when i was uploading it so feel free to give me give me any uh, feedback on the volume and i'll do my best to uh, figure that out and tune it in i know the volume on youtube a lot of people have comments on it um, both on my channel and on other channels, it's kind of hard to get just right. All right, let's first start off with kind of the less exciting. Oh, and we've got a 1989 uh, Canadian $1 coin down here as well. Let's start off with the 1989s. So these are all 1999s. Yes, I have a lot of them. Um, I usually just go through and fill out these little uh, section, these little uh, containers that I've got for each year. So I've got a pile of each year. We are moving these aside and we will focus just on these uh, 1989s. We'll run through the mintages on them quickly and then we'll get back to the other coins that you see in the video. All right, starting off with 1989. Uh, there's a pile of coins everywhere. That's all right because the mintages on the 1989 are super high, which is why I'm able to get so many of them right here. The mintages in 1989, there were 1,298,000,000 made at the Philadelphia Mint. At the Denver Mint, a little bit more rare, but still 896,535,000 of these were made. So 1.2 billion at the Philadelphia Mint, 896 million at the Denver Mint. Now, the Red Book has a price guide for a Mint State 65 at $2 for all of the coins that we are going to look at today. Yes, that includes the 2009 uh, D dime, which we'll look at later. Um, because you really need to go higher uh, into the mint state 67 for it to be worth really any money. Now you can sell high graded coins in raw condition on eBay, but you'll only be able to sell them for a dollar or two. Now the Cherry Picker's Guide to Rare Die and Variety Coins unfortunately doesn't have any 1989s called out in there as far as error coins. In fact, they're... Uh, Error coins go right from 1985 to 1987 all the way up until 2004. So the U.S. Mint must have been uh, kind of on point with their coin presses for the decade of 89 to 99 and then up until 2003 because apparently there weren't any errors in that entire uh, decade plus time frame. All right, we've moved on to the 1999. We'll get through these quickly. I wanted to show off two coins. Uh, this one right here is in just absolute great condition. Now you can sell coins like this in good shape on eBay for a dollar. Isn't a lot of profit to be made there. Uh, you gotta do kind of a lot of work. You gotta spend 50 cents on the shipping. So your net only about 50 cents uh, per coin. But the real money maker, if you're gonna do that, is to sell entire rolls of them. Now you don't have to get them graded as long as you're very transparent about that. You can sell them as what they're called raw coins. You sell an entire roll of them and you can sell them sometimes for one or two times face value. Uh, for the 2009s, you can definitely sell them for face value. So I was just showing this one uh, two times face value. So I'm showing this one off right here because it's in great shape. And uh, this one right here, <laughs> Unfortunately, this is in rough shape. It looks like it's been run over a couple of times. Uh, the edges are very worn out and we've got some scratches going across the entire thing. Uh, but just kind of a cool instance of a very banged up coin. 
Now, as far as the mintages of the 1999 at the Philadelphia Mint, there were 1999 at the Philadelphia Mint, there were 2,164,000,000 of them that were made. At the Denver Mint, again, they're a little bit lower, but still very high at 1.3 billion. So 2.1 billion made for the Philadelphia Mint, 1.3 billion made for the Denver Mint. So nothing rare here either. So I'm gonna move that entire pile aside. Here are some straggler 1999 Denver Mints. Now let's go into the other coin that we've got from 1999. This one, right, 1989, excuse me. This one right here, the Canada $1 coin. And then we will transition to this one right here, the 2009 Denver Mint. So this is a Canadian $1 coin. In case you're unfamiliar with this coin, this is the kind of Canadian equivalent of the dollar coin. Now Canada has had a lot more success with their dollar coins because when they introduced the dollar coins, they also eliminated the paper coins. The U.S. introduced both, has both the paper coins and the dollar coins, and the dollar coins haven't really caught on because people are still using the paper currency. This particular um, make right here and th this particular design and weight was used from 1987 up until 1989. So just kind of a short period before they decide to switch up the design and the metal content a little. In the year 1989, there were 184 million of these that were produced. The highest in the series is uh, 1987, in which there were 205 million of them that were made. So 184 million of these that were made. So you're going to have to get them in the uncirculated condition uh, in order for to be able to sell them at a premium. Queen Elizabeth II on the obverse, and then on the reverse side, we have a loon. And that's uh, the loon is just swimming on a lake, and it's surrounded with the inscription Canada. All right, now into the most interesting coin of the series. As we can see here, it's in a coin flip. It's uh, got the mint roll. Now, I did purchase this uh, Roosevelt 10 cents, in case you forgot how much the dime is worth. This is the 2009 Denver Mint. Now, what makes this special, the 2009 years, is the relative low mintage. Now, keep in mind when we're talking about the 1999 we're talking about 2.1 billion and 1.3 billion being produced at the different mints. Now for 2009, the mintage drops all the way down to 96,500,000 for the Philadelphia Mint and then just 49,500,000 for the Denver Mint. So we go from billions being made to just 96 million and 49 million made at the respective mints. Now that is because of the financial crisis and the economic slowdown that we experienced at the end of 2008 and the start of 2009. Uh, the Lehman Brothers bankruptcy was the largest bankruptcy in the United States. That occurred in September of 2008. That's kind of when everyone realized that we were in a very difficult spot right there. I'm going to flip it over to the reverse side. Now, a key designation for this, in case you're new to collecting Roosevelt dimes, is you want to look at the bands on the torch. Now, the bands are the uh, horizontal components right here that uh, go into holding these uh, sticks together. To get the full bands designation, you're going to want to see some clear separation right there and then clear separation down here at the bottom. And in fact, I'm actually going to read to you uh, from the PCGS website their exact definition for full bands. So at the upper cross, uh, cross bands need to be fully separated and clear. And then at the lower cross bands, uh, they need to be sharp and distinct as well as fully separated and clear clear. The non-full bands will have this flattened out and this flattened out right here. Now that's in two parts. One, uh, if the coin doesn't get struck as well when it's being made at the United States Mint, it will flatten that out right there and then down here at the bottom. And two, if it gets wear, wear and tear in circulation, that will also flatten it out because that's one of the high points on the reverse side of the Roosevelt time. 
Now, what can these coins be worth in very high condition? Well, they can be worth quite a lot. Just looking at the 2009 Denver Mint, PCGS has a price guide for the full bands at a mint state 68 at $1,750. Now they've graded just one of those at a mint state 68 full bands designation for the 2009 Denver Mint. Now you'll need to get yours graded uh, mint state 66 or higher for it to be worth the money. A mint state 66 full bands designation PCGS has a price guide of uh, $35 and they've graded 154 of those. Now $35 is right around break even as far as getting your coin graded for the cost and the effort associated with it. So you might just be better off buying a mint state 66, 67, mint state 65, 66 on eBay that's already been graded in what coin collectors call fully slabbed so that has that hard plastic case going around it. Uh, you can buy those in the high teens, low $20, and that way you don't have to take the risk of getting the coin graded yourself uh, because that does require some money for you to dish out upfront for it to get graded, and then you risk the fact that it could grade lower than a 66 or 67, at which point the cost of grading it would be more uh, than the value of the coin. All right, everyone, that's all I've got for you today. Hopefully you enjoyed looking at some 1989s right, well, we got the 1999s right here. We got the 1989s in this pile right here. We even looked at a Canadian 1989 dollar, but most of our focus was on this beauty right here, the 2009 Denver Mint Roosevelt Dime. All right, everyone, best of luck coin collecting. Enjoy, have a great day.